Welcome to the Man Cave. Today, we're going to look at part two of the Pornogotchi video. Now you've built it, what could you do with it? So welcome back and uh, well, apologies it's been a little bit of time from this video to the uh, the last one. And mainly that's because I've been having an awful lot of building work done back in the uh, in the main part. And this man cave has been used for storage and various other things. So now it's like, oh, I can touch. Look, there's a whole big surface here. It's lovely. But anyway, less about my problems and more onto this little baby. So in the last video, we built this. We soldered it together. We put things on it and, and we made it whole. So today, what are we going to do? Well, for those of you who've been playing with your Pornogotchis that you made, you will have noticed that you've now been connecting and collecting um, WPA handshakes. And what can you do with a WPA handshake? Well, today, with the aid of the trusty hacking laptop, we're going to show you exactly what you can do. So a little bit of a word of caution. So you've got your device, you've been uh, looking at it, you've been uh, collecting uh, WPA handshakes, and now you've got to think about what you want to do with it. So it's been collecting those handshakes, and now we're going to have a look at, well, what can I do? Can I crack the passwords? Is that what this whole thing's leading to? Well, yes, it is. You more than likely can crack the passwords on the WPA handshakes. And why are we doing this? Well, we're doing this for a very, very good reason, which is to show people why very poor quality WPA handshakes may not be compatible with good network security. So we've got our handshakes, we've got our Pornogotchi, we've got, we've got the handshakes on it, and now we're going to connect to it. Now a quick word of warning, you need to be aware of the law in your locality, where I physically am sitting right now, collecting WPA handshakes and having a look at them is not illegal. Doing something further with that information may very well be illegal. So you need to be aware of what is illegal and what is illegal and make the decisions yourself as to where, um, where you want to stay. Of course, you want to stay on the right side of the law for where you currently sit. And all laws across the world are totally different when it comes to computer crime and many other crimes. So just be really, really aware you do not want to go into that. And this is not to show you how to hack Wi-Fi networks. This is to show you the risk of the uh, poor WPA passwords so that you can make informed decisions and you can educate other people to say, Please, if Wi-Fi security is important to you, don't pick WPA standard handshakes. Pick big, long passwords. Pick WPA2. WPA3 is also here now. WPA2 with, uh, with, an, with a certificate is probably much, much, much better than WPA1 with a, um, with a static um, key. Anyway, let's go into what we can actually do. So you will have noticed, and I mentioned this the last time, that your Pornogotchi has got two micro USB ports and an HDMI port there. And of course, on this side here, it's got the um, uh, the memory card. Now, the reason why I'm mentioning this is because what I want to be point out is of the two ports, they're not identical. One of the ports, the port here, furthest away from the memory card on this side here, this one over here, is really only for power. This one here, the middle port, the port closest to the HDMI is also actually an Ethernet device. So if I take a micro USB cable and plug it in there, take the other end of my micro USB cable and plug it into my trusty laptop, I will actually be able to power this up and log in. So as you can see, the little flashy red light, and if you can see it on the camera, has lit up and this is now booting up and now doing its funky thing. So what we'll do is we'll just leave it flat on the machine, on the, on the desk there. I'm gonna log on to this machine and then you're gonna come all the way around here and be over my shoulder right here so you can see what I'm typing. See you in a second. Clear. Right, so um, we just need to bring up a, um, bring up the network connection, so, it's going to be just that. So I've just had a quick look at this and my um, device is on EMP0S20U301. You can grab that from just looking at dmessage and just looking at what the last network device is. So I'm going to bring it up on 10.0.0.1. The reason for that is because this device will be on 10.0.0.0.2. That's the hard coded address that I kind of left in there. So if we now SSH in as pi to there and we're going to use the password of Raspberry. I think I typed in Raspberry wrong there. I certainly did. Oh, I didn't type in Raspberry wrong. Remember, Raspberry has a P in it. R-A-S-P-Berry. Rasp. 
Raspberry, rather than Raspberry, which is what how I kept on spelling it initially. So, if nothing else, this will teach you how to spell the word Raspberry. So, back to the computer again. So, um, let's have a quick look at what we're going to do here. Yeah, so, um, we're going to just go to root very quickly. Now we're going to go to the uh, slash root and hand sh uh, handshakes directory. And you can see uh, a few files there. Now I can't SCP from this device back to my laptop because I don't have an SSH daemon running on this laptop. Now if I did have an SSH daemon running on this laptop, I could just SSH stuff straight back in again. But in actual fact, what I'm going to do is I am going to open up a new terminal a new tab, and I'm going to, oops, CD direct with YouTube, and I am going to SCP all of the files down. So first of all, I'm just going to copy uh, hack me demo star to slash home, and I'm going to put it in the Pi directory, because I can reach the Pi directory. Jump over here, now I'm back on my, my actual real terminal, this is like on my real machine, and I'm going to uh, SCP, oops, I don't have anything there, uh, SCP 10.0.0.2 colon, because um, 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 I'm in the Pi directory, I'm going to do it as Pi at there, and I want a hack me demo. There we are. So now we pulled down these two files, hack me demo and hack me demo uh, 12. And then the reason why I've got two files there is because I have two Wi-Fi access points. Uh, I should note, I should say, actually, I created the hack me demo specially. I had it running as a secondary network running on my um, on my um, ubiquity infrastructure here. Um, and I actually deliberately set it up with a very, very easy to guess password and a very weak password. So you're going to see actually it's a very, very easy to guess password. It's actually just some just one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, um, which would be a lot easier to get. And the reason for this is because this laptop is particularly old and particularly rubbish. And therefore, I need to have a particularly easy one to get. But any one you're going to get might be a bit harder. Now. Now we're finished. Actually, we don't need this turned on anymore. This is now done. We've we've captured the one uh, thing, the uh, the one handshake that we wanted. Uh, you can see it's actually doing something here. Made new friends, got zero new handshakes. That's because actually out in the man cave, there actually isn't much Wi-Fi all the way out here. So I'm going to unplug the Raspberry Pi, and we're now going to be we're now in the YouTube directory. So let's have a quick look what we've got. So we've got some files here. Now I'm just going to quickly remove uh, hack me pcap because I don't need that because that's from uh, before. So first of all, what I want to be able to run is you need two two files. You need so you need two packages. You need the um, you need the um, um, hashcat utils directory, or you need hashcat utils, which you can download as a binary package for Windows users, or and also for Mac and whatever else. And you can also build it as source. And you also need um, hashcat, the actual, um, the main actual file, uh, the actual main program. So we need to convert these pcap files into something that hashcat can use, which needs to be an HCCAPX format. So the way we're going to do that is very, very, very simple. We are going to run the hashcat utils. So they are actually in tilde quentin hash cat utils uh, bin. Um, uh, what have we got in there? Uh, do, 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 what is it called? Uh, oh no. Um, cap to HGX. So you can see I'm just jumping into the utils. I just built them in the source directory. You wouldn't do this, but you may do this. It doesn't really matter. Um, so I've got my cap to HGX.binary file and the input file is one of my uh, files, which is hack me demo. Put it in that one. I, I don't really matter. I've got two of them and I think there's about four, four handshakes in each one. And my output file is going to be hack me dot hccapx. I mean, it doesn't matter. These file names don't matter at all. These extensions don't matter any at all. But I'm just going to make sure it's very clear so you know that I'm converting from that pcat file into an hccapx file. So we'll put it into that. So you can see what we've got here is we've got four handshakes written in there. So now we have a file called hackme.haccpx. 
So let's have a quick look. Now, what can we do with that? So, we're going to run Hashcat. Now, as this is a particularly old and crap machine with no uh, graphics accelerators that can be used, and I'm going to have to actually use a force command because it doesn't really want to do it in CPU because Intel's, um, uh, this architecture of Intel, if this is an old i3, I think, maybe it's an i5, um, is, is particularly terrible. Uh, it's not going to run unless I use force. But you're going to have a much bigger, much, much sexier cracking rig. You're going to have repurposed your Bitcoin mining rig uh, to crack past words and therefore you're not going to have to do any of this but I'm going to if I just uh, less the um, the dictionary file I created as you can see it's just three files one two three four five six seven eight all zeros and all ones just to give it three files so as you can see I've got a, a hackme.hccapx I've got my temp.dix file and I've got my thing so I'm going to run hashcat now I'm going to have to use minus minus force because I don't have a crypto coprocessor in here and uh, this is going to take a heck of a long time. It, and I, well, it's just it's going to take a long time. And that's why I'm going to use a temporary dictionary file. So I need to do minus M2500 just puts it into uh, HACCPX mode. My next file is hackme.hacppx and I'm going to use uh, the temp dictionary.txt. Now this should f finish fairly quickly and let's just see how this goes on. So I press enter on that one so you can see it's starting. It's got four digests and it's going to sit here and it's going to uh, uh, actually just start creating its various bits and pieces. Do, 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 do. And it's now looking through. It's trying all of them and it got them virtually instantaneously. So actually you can see here it's got the hack me demo and it said that actually the password to hack me demo was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and it took zero seconds. Now, in your cases, it's going to take an awful lot longer and you can put a lot more uh, hashes in there. But um, I want to do a really, really quick demo because this machine, I believe, to crack that one, to go through the entire key space of eight characters of just numbers, takes around um, a few hours on this laptop. It'll take seconds on, or about um, five minutes on a, a five-year-old machine. It'll take seconds on a modern, really, really punchy hacking machine. But I just wanted to really, really just demonstrate to you just how you do this. So away from here, and we're going to go back to the other camera. So I hope that's been useful. We've taken you through how to build from first principles a poor Nagotchi, how to install the operating system, uh, how to solder the header. Seriously, buy one with the pre-soldered header, unless you like soldering, of course, if you're that kind of masochist. Um, <clears throat> I've also taken you through how to uh, extract the PCAP files, how to copy them straight off of the uh, via the USB. Obviously, there's many other ways. I SSH'd in and pushed them across. You could do many, many other things. Um, uh, there's a web interface as well, which I haven't gone into. I've shown you how to take those PCAP files and how to extract the uh, hashes into HACC, sorry, HCC PX, uh, APX, HCC APX format, uh, and then how to uh, how to crack those in a very very sample way. Um, obviously, a real password will be an awful lot harder to crack. And why have we shown this? Well, I wanted to show this to show people just how poor WPA can be, WPA1 can be. And if you can use WPA2 and you best if you use certificates, even better. And to be honest, in your in your scenario, maybe WPA1 is absolutely perfectly fine. I mean, my car only does WPA1. Um, and in reality, the only thing that's on there is the kids' iPads doing YouTube. So I'm not actually all that bothered. And you can't get onto the, the car's systems from there. But um, anyway, um, have fun, enjoy yourself, and, and think about what you can do next with this. So, I mean, you can, for example, on this one, I've added a battery pack on there so that I can go around and I've got a clock on here and a few other bits and pieces. So you can add those on. Um, you can actually, with two of them, they can talk to each other and they can start exchanging information about things that they each could do. Um, I mean, you don't need a battery pack. You can put a big um, USB battery pack on there and just, just run it from there. If you like what you're seeing here, please, let me know, like and subscribe and have a nice day and see you next time.